The transfer to the main board at that nation is very good. Um, historically, South Africa, we then need to approach the transfer to the main board to improve liquidity, to be able to have a wider range of shareholders and come to the register. The NAV and the correction that I made earlier is sitting at 116.91, which is the representative 32% discount to the trade fund last trade at on the journey. So the share has been steady in the in the last 12 months with some of the shareholders. It's quite a bit of a push on the fund and it's trading in the current currency, which we're going to be the one that's going to be And then the big, the big aspect, which was the migration, which is the fact that we now have a fund. Strategy. You know, where to come now? So we've got 12 months of the result. We've got some track records. We've got both in Morocco um, and both in Peace. And I think for us as a management uh, team, we are going to vote uh, on our hard team that we have in both of those jurisdictions. So we've got some great plans on the back of the road. I mentioned earlier in Morocco. Opportunity around that. I've mentioned that some people are taking acquisition in Mauritius, and the growth of the portfolio again is very much again a strong counterpart to the US dollar. What does that mean? It means, you know, the, the, the risk about some of the business is not that they are very easy for that content. We let them take to know the current government, for example, that we see. Now, if you are sitting with the big top market, shopping centers in the guys are trading in the and they've got dollar centers, you can understand where the challenges are. But you can't find pure dollar values, and the only thing you want to do is have the ability to find this dollar. And just to, just the final two points, which really, you've got the strategic partnerships, which is going to allow us to welcome our portfolio partners in the future, and the ability. Strategy could not be in Africa. Just some of the housing structure, just to give you an indication of how we operate, um, as myself, on the other side of the earth, Mr. Pearson to my left here, who's a great one of operating housing equipment, um, is our country executive in um, Mozambique, where it's over eight years, series of not only the business in Mozambique, but we're just in the market. And we're just now in the process of transferring our business. Great. Yeah, to my right um, is our the financial report profile. We have been working at this point for the last 12 years. And in different sectors, we have the ability to really understand what's going on in the structure of the company, the growth of the company, and the information to what we're doing. Um, Paul, unfortunately, is um, there to see the process in the last week, so he wasn't able to join us. And our Moroccan um, country executive, um, Paul, managed that to put in um, health assets, as well as just on the corporate structure, um, these structures were very, very onerous, but they're not onerous. There's no the strange structure in the at all. But basically, we just will give you an idea that our Moroccan money is going to flow through Bank Rain. We have tax treaties, we have proper substance in the Bank Rain, with the ability to flow the money to, to Mauritius. And then everything else is fairly much in line. We have got various um, SPVs that are set up in the Mauritius that own the various properties for the most structure. Just on the shareholding perspective, um, I did mention that he is the CEO of Delta Property Fund. Um, so he and myself and Delta were one of the founders of Delta International. We own 31% of the fund. The intention that Delta will probably remain in the amount of the shareholder, we lost that as well. And we'll probably get down into those funds to the market. PRC, which is the second line item that I mentioned earlier, sitting at 25 percent. Standard is sitting at 9 percent. Standard is a really good institution. In South Africa, that's really bad for that African real estate story. Um, management has been sitting in over here, and this is the management team at 7.8 percent. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thank you.
Firstly, you'll see our Germany first share, 11.28. Um, this is slightly higher than the 11.07 we went to market with about three months ago, which we're quite happy about. You'll see that in terms of the 11.6 months, it's 4.64 cents. That actually is a slight dilution in sort of the of and we have the capital rate, which did not knock on effect and has not been able to transfer the property as soon as we'd like to. The cost to income ratio has gone up slightly. But that is unfortunately a provision for bad debt that we were forced to make, which is related to some bad debt that occurred at the end for more, prior to us taking the transfer of the actual mortgage. The loan to value ratio, 48.2% versus the 49.5%. Uh, we have a slight uptick in the actual value of the, the property, just the 48 with the valuation that we got. So that's dropped that slightly. And also there's a, a, a loan that's denominated in which is the Moroccan currency, which is quite a significant amount. And with the devaluation of the, the actual Moroccan dirham versus the dollar, we've got a little bit of a room to move there as well. In terms of the NAD per share, the has already covered that. So the weight of the average rental per square meter, this has gone up quite nicely. The, the reason for this is primarily because of the, the rate increases that we've got, as well as the transfer of the new properties that have come in. The average rental escalation for the next 12 months, 7.24 percent. We just need to make sure that this, that you're aware that this is going to a little bit higher than the normal 4.1 percent that we're actually expecting, because contractually we get a 10 percent increase in our record in Morocco, but it's only every three years. That triggers in probably January, February next year. In terms of our results, our net property income for the six months virtually unchanged, with just the addition of the three buildings, one coming on in April and one in May. The rental income itself, 13 million for the, the full year. So the operating expenses resulting in a 24.9% cost income ratio. We're quite excited about this cost income ratio because it should come down significantly now onto a large building and both on building, which is a far less intensive operation, far less cost in terms of the net operating. Our administration of expenses is quite significantly higher than the second six months and the first six months. This is just in line with us getting up to speed and setting proper structures in place after the first six months of operation, and also in line with the new properties we wanted to bring up on the street. We've also done a significant amount of marketing and market research, which also took a The next finance cost, you'll see that it's up. Uh, this is unfortunately the line where we had to pay our school fees. We've had a, a few Bridging loans that we've had to put in place to, to ensure that the cost is not as soon as possible. They've all been wound now, in, unwound now, except for one, and that figure should come down now. Our average cost of debt at this stage is 6.83%, which is the focus area almost in the next 12 months. The realised foreign gains and the taxation, these are as a result of a lot of the market that we've mentioned, which we've been considering in recent months with the acquisition of properties. Quite a big portion of upfront cost, which will be able to be that in our case in terms of the cost. Just in terms of the number of shares from 44 to 73, that was a capital raise done on, in the middle of April. And the total capital raise for the entire year was 27.1 of taking the share issue expenses. Thank you. Thank you. The indication of what the assets are and when they are situated. The property portfolio um, currently consists of five uh, properties. Uh, you'll see that the valuation is very much in line with the acquisition cost. The average yield acquired for these properties was between 8.7%. Um, the, what's very important here is you'll notice the, um, the whale with the weighted average lease expiring uh, period, and that's very important to us. I'll talk about marketing. Um, and sitting on the average of 7.3 years. And then the occupancy by GLA is that's what I said earlier around our offices are 100 percent occupied and then our shopping centre in Morocco. This um, slide on the right just shows you the um, geographical and asset values split between Morocco in the blue, sorry, Morocco in the red and Mosley in the blue. This is very much what I said earlier. I think what is very important to note on this particular slide, you look at Mozambique, the GDP um, growth number, 
of 7.1%. Again, that's why that's a strong economy for us to pursue. The GDP growth, which they forecast in 6% in Morocco, is sitting at 4.4%. You know, so those are very good triggers to be while we think we're of great investment opportunities. Going into the portfolios themselves, um, Anglopay Shopping Center, up uh, in case now is located in Morocco, um, in Casablanca. It's a probably a triple A grade um, office, shopping center complex. Um, anchored by um, European hunting, North Africa is very European to what we used to uh, in, in Southern Africa. Anchor tenants, as you can see, come forward with the food um, anchor, which is from France, MS, Market Center, HM, Virgin Medic, um, Mega Store, which is Ted McDonald's, uh, Starbucks, and you can see very European type tenants. The shopping center is just over 50,000 square meters. And the, as the uh, mentioned, the average escalation is in the next 50 years. As you can see from the pictures, and we've got a couple of other pictures in the, um, in the presentation. It's got a bit of a Dubai wall type feel, not as extravagant, but absolutely amazing furniture, absolutely amazing shopping center. Anadarko is one of our prestigious assets in the future. I mentioned the Anadarko building and the Dr. East. Um, very long to live in the East Coast. Very new building, the design profile, very um, uh, up to 2028, and anchored by a very, very superb so expectation. KPMG Holland is also in the sort of main area of Maputo, where all the um, business is conducted um, from, a, um, from a business aspect and, and where, where the building and everything is going on at the moment. Um, anchored by KPMG Holland. Um, also, a great opportunity here on the, on the rental perspective. It's extremely underrated. Um, and this particular building for us is, 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 was a great opportunity to find something that we look at the building is one of our, our um, sort of triple A grade assets. It is, as you can see, um, the home to Vodafone in Vodafone in Maputo. And it is big for them. So this is a lease that they and an organization in their neighborhood. Um, very good acquisition for us. Very much in the same precinct as the hollow building. And, and we are looking at some other time on transactions. So just this just gives you an idea, I'm not going to go too much into detail, really around the sectoral profile between retail and office, and also the geographical profile which is I've touched on some of our um, prospects going forward. You'll see a new brand there, which is very exciting for us. Um, and that brand really comes out of the fact that we want to be known as a specialising on that. So we are in the process of getting shell to approve to change our name to Delta Africa. So that's what our logo will look like going forward. And we really just put our footprint down and say that we are a purely African real estate play outside of South Africa. The ability to just use the IP that is keeping around me and gain those jurisdictions to be able to buy the bulk up, to be able to get shareholders there and turn access to dollar returns, access to good growth of those dollar returns. Very good strategic JV partnerships. We've got one particular partnership up there. We've got two South African partners that we look at JV in this jurisdiction, which will allow us to bulk up the skills of our team and be able to bulk up our portfolio. Being able to access international um, as a team, we've been on extensive roadshow um, internationally, and we look like we have the ability to access both international VNP, which is key. You know, to access good gigs, dollar rates, dollar funding, and um, obviously making returns of substantial value to shareholders. The reconversion is very exciting for us. So we have the ability to take money out of the country without going to the open country tax structure, um, tax rate, and what is the be able to do that. <coughs> the destination for the country is an active community and it's a place that we can drive in our I want to make sure that we are coming to the market. And the final point is really around what's our long term strategy. We really see Delta Africa, really great Delta Africa, very long term strategy. Thank you for spending the time with us this morning. Hopefully, we get to the channel time.
Basically, if you look at the lead profile there, most of the 2020, it's a, a ring lease. Okay. So there's a 10-year lease on that. Now, the data center for the country, for Vodafone, actually sits in that building as well. So as much as you see our acquisition cost there, um, the actual value that they've put in in CapEx for their heading equipment is over $250 million. $250 million. 
So for them to move out of that building, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, yeah. So, for my level, Yeah, so what I was going to say is there's expansion already included in the building. So there's, there's three floors that sit vacant currently, um, and they're growing into that space. But wh what they're doing is they're not, they're not uh, looking to expand that head office. They're rather looking to put satellite offices around the country as those areas and nodes expand. So it will always be head office in Puto, but now they've got new things coming up in Nampula, Nankala, Tet, where they put little sat satellite offices that grow. Thank you. 
We don't have that. Yes. Leases in dollars, debts in dollars, everything's in dollars. Yeah. Has been. Yeah. So that's the process Brian was speaking about earlier with central bank approval. Because we are a foreign investor into the country, we're allowed to have all our debt and equity in dollars. And all our leases are then allowed to be in dollars as well.
I think on behalf of the city, thank you for the support. Thank you again for joining us today. South Africa.